mental disorders are a problem many across the globe have faced and continue to face everywhere in the world across all time periods. According to the National Institute of Mental Health, 44.7 million Americans over the age of 18 deal with a mental disorder, meaning 18% of our adult population is affected. But what constitutes as a mental illness? What is the difference between feeling sad a lot of the time and a full-on impairment? The definition given by the DSM-5 is a syndrome characterized by clinically significant disturbance in an individual's cognition, emotion regulation, or behavior that reflects a dysfunction in the psychological, biological, or developmental processes underlying mental functioning. These clinically significant disturbances can range anywhere from depression, schizophrenia, anorexia, and addiction. Of these disorders, depression is by far the most prevalent with it affecting over 300 million people globally. This can include someone that you know personally, whether it be your friends, family, coworkers, or even your teachers. Someone you care for could be in stress. Mental illness and how it's portrayed in the media is commonly unfair in how it's depicted. There's often a greater focus on the more extreme conditions a mental illness can bring, such as violence and unsettling behavior often given the impression that people who live with these ailments are deranged and dangerous. In a New Zealand study conducted to examine news articles as depictions of the mentally ill, it was found that of the 600 samples they surveyed, over half of them painted those with mental disorders in a negative light, often focusing on violent outbursts and unpredictability rather than any of the positive characteristics. This misrepresentation of sufferers as violent psychopaths is a particularly unfortunate one, as outside of news stories, there's not often a link between violence and mental illness. This makes sense, in a way, as suffering in silence does not make for very engrossing news stories. On the other hand, the aforementioned New Zealand study found that whenever the subject of the news article gave their own side of the story, the readers viewed them in a much more positive light. Despite being in such large numbers, many sufferers of mental disorders go without treatment. According to the National Institute of Mental Health, around 40% of the 44 million American sufferers do not seek professional help. However sad this fact may be, it's not entirely unreasonable, given the history of stigma and abuse these people have faced. Mental illness has been historically misunderstood, and thinking depression was caused by demons that needed to be tortured out of the body, or by interpreting the symptoms women experience during their menstrual cycle as a form of mental disease. For the longest time, there were no psychiatric hospitals to take care of them, only insane asylums, which were basically just prisons. It took until the 18th century for them to be created, and even when they were, they were rife with abuse. Even in more recent times, these hospitals were underfunded and filled with human rights violations, so much so that in the 1980s, the Civil Rights of Institutionalized Persons Act was legislated in order to protect patients' well-being. So, start off, what is your name? My name is Portia Pate. And what do you do? I am a clinical therapist. I'm also a licensed alcohol drug counselor. So I treat anywhere from 16 plus people with mental illnesses, people with substance use disorders. And so my first question for you is, what are some of the biggest challenges people with mental disorders face today? That's a really great question. Um, one of the most obvious answers to that is stigma. So stigma being um, that mental illness, it's sort of a decision that people make, right? Or it's something that, um, it's a cultural construct that's something that we've created here in the United States. Um, I think access to mental health care is also a challenge that people face with mental illness, education, lack of resources, so accessibility, stigma, education, I, I would say are the, <clears throat> probably the most three primary um, barriers to mental illness or mental, uh, mental health care as it pertains to those mental illnesses. You said that some people think it's just something created in the United States. How do you think culture affects uh, mental illness and like 
its effect on those people? That's a really great question. Um, culture has a direct influence on, are you saying mental illness itself? Yeah. Um, I think our society, right? So our education, so we, we talk about what is culture. Culture is our family, it's our community, it's our um, education, it's traditions, it's our food. All of those things combined. We do not have to let the mentally ill face their problems alone. We can help them. If there's someone you know who is suffering from a mental condition, or who you think is suffering, then let them know you'll be there for them. Do not pester them, however. Intruding on someone's personal space will only make them want to shut you out even more. Encourage them to seek out professional help because, while you being supportive is a great thing in its own right, you yourself are not a therapist, and thus do not have the proper training in dealing with this kind of situation. Knowledge is invaluable here. So spreading information on how to get help works wonders on reducing the stigma surrounding mental illness. If you don't know someone who is suffering, then you can volunteer and or donate to mental health organizations, such as the National Alliance on Mental Illness, or you can vote for politicians who support mental health changes. Mental illness does not need to fester in the darkness. Shining some light on these issues will protect those in pain and will prevent even more disaster and heartbreak.